The first question is 20 parts. Ridiculous. Hi everyone, in this video I want to go over a test from Harvard University. So the other day I was thinking, I wonder how hard the Calculus 1 final exam is at Harvard. So I googled Calculus 1 final exam and I'm pretty sure this was the first hit. I'll leave the link in the description. This is a Calc 1 final from Harvard University. So I looked at this PDF, I went through the whole thing, I tried to answer all of the questions, uh, you know, in my head, like can I do the question, you know, and if I could do it, you know, I, I did a quick computation and I worked it out. So let's go through it very carefully. So it says, try to answer each question on the same page as the question is asked. Okay, if needed, use the back. Okay, no problem there. Do not detach pages. All functions f, if not specified, otherwise can be assumed to be smooth. Okay, please write neatly. No calculators. And you have 180 minutes to complete your work. And looks like it's... 13 questions. All right, so the first question is 20 parts. Ridiculous. So I was thinking, wow, like, this is pretty hardcore. Already the first question, you have 20 parts and they're all multiple choice. Now, that being said, they are not completely uh, insane multiple choice questions. Uh, for example, look at the third one there. The derivative of cosine of 4x is equal to negative 4 times the sine of 4x. Yep, that's just the chain rule. Look at the second one. The intermediate value theorem assures that the function e to the sine x has a root in the interval 0 to pi. That's impossible because e to the x is always positive, so you can just look at it and say false. So you can go through this quite easily, and you can make determinations about what you think about each of the questions, you know, true or false, true or false. And the nice thing is, if you guess, you have a 50-50 shot. Now, ideally, you don't want to guess. Ideally, you want to, um, you know, have the question, you know, right. Look at this one. Hopital's rule assures that cosine x over sine x has a limit as x goes to zero. That's not true because if you plug in zero there, you're going to get cosine of zero over sine zero. So you're going to get one over zero. So you can't even use L'Hopital's rule, right? Ridiculous. <laughs> it's really, really fun. I highly recommend you, you try this test and, and see what you think. And the cool thing is there are solutions. Again, I'll put the link in the description. Let's keep going through this test, though. It gets a lot more interesting. This is problem two. It has you basically fill in the blank. So it says we have this limit here is called the, well, that's the derivative, right? It's like, yeah. You know, you feel like a champion, too. If you're in Calc 1 and, like, you can answer these questions, you'll be like, yeah, you know, I can, I can handle the Harvard Calculus 1 final exam. You know, I can handle any calculus class. It's kind of, it's kind of fun to look at it. Uh, all kinds of, of really, really nice problems. Really, really cool. These are all fill in the blanks here, so not super bad. Ooh, look at this one. This one might cause people problems. Uh, the antiderivative of that, of a probability density function f, is called the, that's the cumulative distribution function. So if you're taking calc 1, you may not know that. This one here caused me some problems. Let me scroll down so you can see it. This one. A point x for which the second derivative is equal to 0 is called an. So I was thinking, okay, that point doesn't have a name, right? Because I think they mean to say inflection point, but an inflection point, uh, by most definitions, is an ordered pair, because it's a point, where the concavity of the graph changes, right? So the answer, though, was inflection point. So I, I googled it, I looked it up, and apparently, I, I forgot, I don't remember, uh, but apparently in certain fields of mathematics, that's an okay definition for inflection point. So I don't know why Harvard would choose to use that definition for their class. I don't know why they would teach it that way. Uh, you know, it's done in a really non-standard way. I mean, pretty much every other calculus book I have that I've seen does not define inflection point this way. But yet on the Harvard final exam, they, they choose to define inflection point this way. That's fine. Uh, maybe they know something uh, that the rest of us don't. Just, I, I thought that was wrong when I first saw it. I spent some time looking it up, and I, I finally found something on the internet that said, no, no, whenever you're studying topic XYZ, it, it's considered okay. So... Kind of a, a rant on that, but but yeah, it really it really bothered me for a little while. Let, let's keep going. So here we have like some some fill in the blank, not too bad. I, I think you have to be really careful when you're filling this in. So like the first one says f equals g prime, and the other one says g equals f prime, and then there's then there's none. 
So it's uh, kind of kind of tricky. You have to really, really think about what you're doing. I mean, you do have three hours for this test. So that does give you, it does give you some time. Here you have some matching, lots of fun there. <laughs> I'm gonna be really careful with the matching. And here you have to find some, some limits at the bottom here, not, not too bad. Find the area of the shield shaped region bounded by the two curves. What a cool problem. I mean, whoever came up with this, awesome. Uh, really, really impressive. Uh, it's way cooler than my calculus test, that is for sure. Here you have another application problem, with the Liberty Bell, fun stuff. Here you have an integral. This is pretty easy if you know some stuff about the p-test for um, integration, but if you don't, um, you know, then it's not, not so easy. Same thing here. Here we have another application problem. Pretty, pretty cool. Another antiderivative, just going kind of, kind of fast here. What's this? We have some integrals. Solve the integral, e to the x squared 2x. That's pretty easy. I mean, I think, I think most calculus one students could do that, right? You just make a u substitution. Um, it's it's not uh, not too bad. Same thing with with part b. I guess if you make a u substitution there, um, you'll just get the log of x. By the way, by log, they mean the natural log. Um, I didn't mention it, but it came up earlier. Remember, I went I went through every single problem, and I had to notice that by log they do mean ln. So to integrate log x, you would just use uh, integration by parts after that. And part C is also relatively uh, straightforward. Just It looks like another U substitution uh, in that case as well. This is problem 10. It's pretty straightforward. It's, it's partial fractions. I know where I teach, we do partial fractions in Calc 2. So uh, this is pretty hardcore. I mean, they, they're covering a lot. This is Calc 1, so uh, it's quite a bit. Nice little related rates problem here. It says the coordinates of a car on a freeway intersection are given by two parametric equations. They are related by that. Okay. Fine y prime. Okay, so uh, sure it's related rates, but um, it's not like a super hard problem. It's actually pretty easy to do. You just use implicit differentiation and go from there. I mean, you need some easy. I mean, this is this is a pretty intense test. And these aren't too bad. Find the antiderivatives of these. Yeah, they don't look they don't look super tough. And then we have this one, last one here. It talks about some other stuff. Looks like a, a, a word problem. And the last one mentions snap, crackle, and pop. So those are the fourth, fifth, and sixth derivatives of the position function. So kind of a fun read. So if you if you decide to check this test out, you know, print it like I did, and work through the ones you can do, and then it's really fun to compare your answers. You're, you're going to feel really, really good uh, when you get um, some of these right. So the test was pretty hardcore. I mean, I guess it's about what I expected. I was really shocked and impressed by number one though. Just like right when you sit down, 20 multiple choice questions, like way to have a brain warm up. So take the test and let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to share, like, and of course subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And if you really want to help out, consider becoming a member of the channel. Until next time, take care.